Well, imagine if a hotel could have unlimited on-demand marketing content from incredible photographers, videographers, or writers, just with none of the usual agency costs or travel expenses, and even no content fees, all in a platform that's as easy to use as Airbnb. The go-to-market is a SaaS-enabled marketplace that lets hotels leverage their empty rooms, hosting those photographers, videographers, or writers who pay for their stay with the raw marketing content that hotels need. As an example, you could have a food photographer visit a hotel in Marrakesh for three nights, paying to stay there by shooting the new restaurant menu. The hotel saves the money they'd usually pay to hire someone, and the photographer gets to use an empty room at an amazing hotel while they're traveling. It's bartering, just with content as the currency. And it's evolved from my own contrasting backgrounds, both in finance and actually as a hotel photographer. For now, the very cliched way to think of it is a literal Airbnb for creative people, in time expanding to all types of accommodations, restaurants, and real-world experiences. The long-term vision is a little bigger, and keeping that private for now, but if we go back a few years, Arrive started as just me, with my camera, as that photographer in Marrakesh. It started as nothing to do with tech. It was just me taking photos as my hobby. It evolved first getting free stays at hotels, then charging subscriptions for my photography, then organizing other people doing that, a kind of a community model. But over time, I realized that it had to be a marketplace that leveraged empty rooms. It had to be a SaaS tool that saved the hotel's money. That's the real scalable business model. But I had no idea how to build that. I'd worked in finance for eight years, not tech. So I looked at all the options and all the platforms but because Arrive is so content heavy with photos and videos, what I really needed was a scalable backend that I could get some credits for. I'm bootstrapping. That's Firebase. And pretty quickly through Firebase, I found Flutterflow. And it worked natively with Firebase. It was a more familiar design experience. I could build quicker and scale further and cheaper. You know the rest. So I switched to Flutterflow as quickly as I could. And since then, I've been doing things that don't scale building, testing, physically going to the hotels to personally do their first partnership with me as creator zero in the platform. See, I'm now technical enough to know that lists start at zero rather than one. And as a funny example of how non-technical I was, the original name that I had for the idea was actually Flutter. I had no idea about Flutter the Toolkit, and the first time I heard of it was when someone asked me if I was working on Flutter at Google. So that's the background. Now, let's have a look at the calendar and messaging system. So starting with the calendar, this is really the base of all the workflows in Arrive. It lets a hotel set availability, and creators can then send requests for available dates. It's default closed, and that probably feels quite familiar, because it's mirrored from Airbnb's open source Horizon calendar. The problem was that I had no idea how to get that Swift calendar from GitHub into Flutterflow, so I just had to build my own. Now, if you look at the structure of a calendar, it starts with a simple horizontal row to display a set number of months in advance, say 12 columns, 12 months. Then within those columns, you have the dynamic data for each month. There's a title, say September. The days of the week are fixed, so that's easy. And then you have a seven column dynamic grid to display the correct date within that month. It obviously needs to show that today, the 17th, is in the Tuesday column. To generate all the dates, there's a cascade of custom functions that give you the dynamic data you need at each stage. And the eventual data you have within that specific day in the grid slot is just a date time for the index of the month within a day, the date within a month, say number 17 for today. You then obviously have a lot of conditional styling. If the date's in the past, if it's outside of that grid's month, if it's an available date, if it's selected, blocked out, however it is, they all need to have different styling to make the user aware of all the options for that date in a really familiar way. And all of that is just handled through conditionals on the fill, border, and text colors. Some of them are pretty complex and go like five levels deep with multiple and or conditions, but it's all native and fully customizable. So hopefully that shows you that you can build something as complex as a calendar with all the edge cases around dates and times, all within Flutterflow, just with a little bit of help from whichever AI tool you use. The next part is the messaging system, and this has even less code. 
It's kind of a fully responsive messaging mega component with everything you need in a chat system. So it all starts with structuring the content in two panels. On the left, we have a list of the conversation documents. On the right, a list of the messages subcollection within the active conversation. So the main feature is obviously sending messages, photos, videos, even voice notes. You can then reply direct to any message with any other message type or send a quick emoji reaction. These are all just implemented through a lot of conditionals, states, logic flows, but it's as clean and simple as possible. You then have a typing indicator, which is handled by a backend update on the conversation document, triggering when someone's typing. To go with that, you've then got delivered and read times in that same custom dialogue. These are just simple date time fields on the conversation document. And the final part of that flow is the toast notifications. This is basically a list that sits at the top in front of the rest of your content. There's also a simple archiving system, just a conditional builder for the list of conversations, one showing active, the other showing archived. And the last feature is a kind of fuzzy search that you can set really any action you like on the results. It just works in a nice, clean way in a stack to allow for that seamless transition when toggling Boolean state search visible. The whole thing is, of course, responsive down to 360 pixel mobile, all done through really simple conditional padding settings. On mobile, it just hides that right side message panel and makes it visible when state active chat is set. And finally, of course, it has dark mode. That's five minutes in Flutterflow. And it only has one custom function, relative time for timestamps. And the only reason I didn't use Flutterflow's built-in relative time feature is because I wanted exact custom control over the words it says to be able to say, sent just now or sent last week. And that's a good example of where you can supplement all the built-in features of Flutterflow with little bits of simple custom code. So yeah, that's Arrive's messaging system. It's hyper-functional, design-focused, and all running through just two Firebase collections, users and conversations. If you want to have a look at either of those, you can actually play around them yourself on the marketplace. You can search for Acme Cal or Acme Chat, and you should find them straight away. So I hope that shows you that I can build far more than I ever thought I'd be able to on my own. I can take that directly to my users, the hotels, and literally build the product with them. Flutterflow gives determined, non-technical people superpowers. It's as simple as that. So to wrap up my final words to anyone who has a background like me, is to just start building. Learn the basics by actually building something. I guarantee you'll be able to build far more than you think. Thank you.